Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how the SA node, which is the sinoatrial node, and the AV node, which is the atrioventricular node, how they send their signal, their electrical signal that we term an action potential, to the rest of the muscle of the heart to tell it to contract. So what we need to go through is, firstly, if I were to draw the heart up itself, and just very quickly, I've got the heart here. We know that there's a fibrous bit of tissue here that separates the atria, the two chambers at the top, and the ventricles, the two chambers at the bottom. And we know that there is a specialized type of myocardium, which is heart muscle cell, a very specialized type that sits at the back of the right atrium that we term the SA node. Now these cells spontaneously depolarize. What's that mean? It means they spontaneously send an electrical signal. They actually do this around about 70 to 100 times a minute. And when they send this signal, they spread the electrical signal to the surrounding heart muscle tissue in a fashion like that. Now, as it spreads that signal through what we term the myocardium, the heart muscle of the atria, that then tells the heart muscle to contract and they squeeze and push the blood down into the ventricles. Now the electrical signal wants to spread down into the ventricles, but it can't because of this fibrous bit of tissue here. But the electrical signal can bottleneck itself through another specialized group of myocardium that we now term the AV node, the atrioventricular node. And the action potentials are being pushed through this AV node, and therefore the heart muscle doesn't contract for 0.1 of a second. There's a break between the atrial contraction and the ventricular contraction of 0.1 of a second. This gives the heart enough time for the ventricles to fill with blood after the atria contract. Once that 0.1 of a second has occurred and the action potential spreads down the AV node, it goes down into what we call the bundle of his, and that spreads to two, the left and right bundle branches, and then they send electrical signals through the ventricular heart muscle. And as it spreads through, that action potential then tells the muscle to contract and blood gets squirted out. If it's the right ventricle, it goes to the lungs. If it's the left ventricle, it goes to the body. So what we're talking about is today, the AV node, sorry, the SA node and the AV node, how do they send their electrical signals? If I said the AV node spontaneously depolarized, they just basically stimulate this action potential all by itself, how does it do it? Well, let's first have a look here. Actually, let's have a look here at a cell of the SA node. So I said there's specialized myocardium, so it looks a little bit different here compared to normal myocardium, but it is connected. You can see there's a conversation that can be had between the SA node and the myocardium. Now, the first thing you need to be aware of is that all cells of the body have a very special pump called the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Let's draw this sodium potassium ATPase pump right here. And what it does is it uses ATP, we know ATP is the energy currency of the body, uses ATP to throw three sodium out of the cell and throw two potassium into the cell. Now I want you to think about that. If we throw three positive sodium out of the cell and throw two potassium into the cell, where do we have a net positive charge? Well, we've got three positive things outside, two positive things inside. The net positive charge is outside, which means the net negative charge is inside. And if you were to compare those charge differences, what you'd find is inside compared to outside, outside is negative five millivolts, okay? So on this, table here where we've got zero millivolts down to negative 90 millivolts up to positive 20, negative five millivolts is only around about here. Now, this isn't all that's happening, but what is happening due to this is we're accumulating a whole bunch of sodium outside the cell and we're accumulating a whole bunch of potassium in the cell. That's the first thing. Second thing is this, this cell is quite leaky to sodium uh, sorry, to potassium, and if it's leaky to potassium, we're gonna have potassium leak out of the cell very slowly. Now, if positive potassium is leaking out of the cell, it becomes even more negative inside, right? Because positive things are going out. So it goes from negative five, actually all the way down to around about negative 55. And so we've now got 
around about negative 55, a charge difference inside compared to outside. So inside's negative 55 compared to the positive outside. Now another thing that's happening is this, these SA node cells are leaking not just to sodium, uh, potassium, but they're also leaking to sodium and calcium. So what you'll find is this, you can have some cells here, let's draw this as a square, you can have some channels here, sorry, that are leaky to calcium. And I want you to think about this, calcium sits predominantly outside the cell. And it will leak into the cell, which brings a positive charge inside. In actual fact, there's also leaky sodium channels, which bring positive sodium into the cell as well. Now you're probably getting confused here. We're throwing three sodium out, two potassium in, but potassium is leaking out, making it negative inside, but we've also got calcium and sodium leaking inside, making it positive inside. It doesn't know what charge it is. In actual fact, what that means is this. It starts, its baseline is around about negative 55, but because of the leaky calcium and sodium, it actually is always drifting, 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 drifting up towards the positive because all this calcium and sodium is slowly drifting in. Now, in actual fact, there is a mark right here at around about negative 40. Now this mark at negative 40 is what we term the threshold and it's the threshold for what? Another group of channels. What are these channels? They're another type of calcium channel. At negative 40, this is the key that unlocks this new type of calcium channel, a faster calcium channel. And when that opens up, more calcium rushes in. And when more calcium rushes in, what we get is a fast stimulus up to around about positive 20. Now when it hits, as this is happening, going up to positive 20, what you'll find is that at around about positive 20, more potassium channels open up. Remember, these were just leaky potassium channels. Now we've got very specific potassium channels opening up and heaps of potassium start to leak out of the cell. Now, if heaps of potassium leak out of the cell at positive 20, the positive is going back out again and it drops back down to around about negative 55 to negative 60. Now, if it's dropping back down to here, what happens again? The whole thing occurs. Leaky calcium, leaky sodium, and then it goes back up to negative 40, which then opens the calcium channels and that sends the signal back up, which closes the channels but opens the potassium channels and it drops back down. So what do we have here? Basically to summarize, we've got at this point here, it's sodium and calcium leaking in. At this point, we've got calcium shooting in. And at this point, we've got potassium going out. Now what we term this is, this part is depolarization, this part is repolarization. Depolarization, repolarization, and this is what's happening at both the SA and AV node. And as you can see, it just spontaneously does this, and it does it at the SA node. It does it around about 60 to 100 times per minute. And at the AV node, it does it around about 40 to 60 times per minute. And this is what we term the pacemaker cells of the heart. So these are the action potentials of the SA node and AV node.